Lucky number six for the Pittsburgh Penguins. That's six in a row for them after a two to one victory for the Dallas Stars. In this episode of the Locked on Penguins podcast, we're going to fully recap that late two to one game over the Stars. The Evgeny Malkin scored the game winner with 34 seconds left. I was in attendance with my girlfriend, so I'm going to go into how it was watching that game in person, who really stood out to me, and then you know if the numbers really backed up what I saw overall so um, for the first time we're going to get into just the heroics from Gino what led in to that goal also get into POJ with how ridiculous he was a bit later on in the show Tristan Jari as well how Chris Letang looked with the second game back from the stroke and so much more so stick around for all this right after this drop your locked on penguins your daily podcast on the Pittsburgh Penguins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I am your host, Hunter Hodes. Remember to follow me on Twitter at Hunter Hodes, all the shows, Twitter at LR Score Penguins, and of course, Thank you all so much for making this your first listen of the day. I feel so much better. You know, it's amazing what three days can do. When you have a cold, I do not sound as congested. At least I hope I did not to all of you. Um, my nose is not as red. And, you know, I just, I'm basically at the end of this uh, at this point. It's about, and that's about damn time. Um, but Penguins 2, Stars 1, six game winning streak up to second place in the Metropolitan Division. And, you know, what a game. You know, it's just, you know, December 12th. You know, you're almost 30 games into the regular season. It's a random Monday night against a Western Conference team. You're thinking, eh, you know, going to be maybe a weird game. No, this this had a playoff feel to it. Decent amount of Stars fans there, at least, you know, from my vantage point, in a really good crowd, for uh, at least from a Penguins perspective. You know, we've been seeing a lot of dead crowds at some games lately. I've just, especially from watching at home and stuff, just hasn't really been the same. But tonight, much better crowd. They were into it. A lot of let's go pens chance. Um, just a really animated crowd compared to some of the other crowds that we've been seeing um, for the past couple of weeks just because they haven't really been selling out games. And, you know, I think part of that, it's due to the construction around the arena. It's been getting a bit colder. You know, it, it, it's still Steelers season. I think that's also a big one. I think some people are just not fully invested in the Penguins as of yet just because the Steelers are still playing. I don't care if the Steelers are 5-8. and eight. This is a football town first. But once that eventually ends, I think you're going to see even more fans come back. And I think, you know, college college students, you know, they're kind of still here. So they're, you know, they're, they're going to be coming to games with their friends coming um, and, and all that stuff. So I, I, just a really nice crowd overall. But, you know, the big moment of this game, and we're going to touch on it right now, is getting Malkin's goal with 34 seconds left in regulation. Honestly, for that entire third period, I was kind of like, it's kind of going to go to overtime. Penguins and, and Stars were really not just generating a lot of offense. If you look at the numbers, it kind of matched up to what I had, to be honest. I mean, it was a very low event game. If you go to all um, expected goals, cumulative all situations, Dallas 1.41 expected goals, the Penguins 1.39. It was a 50-50 split. It was a very low event game, but it also, would, it also didn't look like a low event game just because of how fast both teams were. You know, this is a uh, this is not a heavy Stars team. They, they play with speed, with precision. Their top line is one of the best lines in hockey. They're deep. Their defense is very mobile. They have a great goaltender. Um, that said, this was kind of like a Rick bonus type game where, you know, <clears throat> they're kind of dumbing it down a little bit. I was noticing when I was watching the game at PPG that um, Peter DeBoer was sending out the... I think it was the Ryan Suter, Colin Miller pairing whenever Sid came onto the ice and they were kind of just uh, having them play low event stuff. The Sid line wasn't generating as much offense as they normally do. But, you know, this is how you beat a team like the Stars and the Penguins were able to do that, you know, less than a minute left. Because, um, you know, I thought I was going to see my first three-on-three game in person. I think that would have been a lot of fun. This was only my girlfriend's second hockey game in person. So I was hoping that she was going to see it. But, you know, Vinny Malkin had other plans and I think they were better plans as of that, you know. Um, Jason Zucker comes into the zone, gives it to Gino, who gives it to Rust. He does his patented, you know, backhand, forehand move. He tries to stuff it in. 
runs into Jake Ottinger, incidental contact. You know, Ottinger is way out of his crease. Um, I, I originally thought that, uh, you know, the goal was going to get called back because after, you know, Ross and Ottinger, they kind of make contact. He's out of the net a little bit. Malkin buries the rebound. Ottinger was throwing his hands up saying, like, where's the call? And, you know, they went to Toronto to look at it with the situation room. They confirmed it was a good goal. Um, Dallas did not challenge for goal interference because there's 34 seconds left. I think if you do that, you're kind of screwing yourself in that situation. But um, the fact that Toronto was able to review it um, and then have to challenge, you know, that's also big. But again, the reason why it wasn't called back was because Ottinger was kind of out of the crease. So you're you're kind of fair game at that point. And, you know, he kind of, you know, initiated that contact, at least how, how I saw it in person. And that was, you know, Gina was able to bury the loose change and get his first goal in 10 games. And the Penguins were able to take home a, a crucial two points because, you know, the Rangers won again tonight. They're starting to heat up. A little bit. You're now a couple points clear of the Hurricanes, though you do have a game or two in hand on them. You have a couple, you're a few more points ahead of the Islanders now. Penguins are officially second place in the Metro. But, you know, that goal I thought capped off a really good performance for the Penguins. Outside of that opening 20 second goal that came from Rupe Hints, the Stars didn't do anything on offense. You know, 59 41 minutes, 59 minutes, 59 minutes, 41 seconds of scoreless hockey really solid stuff from the Penguins. And, you know, the numbers, they backed up at least what I saw the Stars. Only five high-danger chances for the Penguins. They also had five high-danger chances. If you look at the expected goals, the Stars, only 1.31 expected goals at 5v5 per natural stat trick, 1.2 expected goals again. So, you know, very low-scoring, you know, score effects. That matched up to what I saw and in terms of even just high danger chances, they didn't really have anything going there either. The Stars actually only had two high danger chances in, the third, in this third period. And I'm pretty sure both of those came with about two minutes remaining in the third period when they had that very long shift in the Penguins' defensive zone. That actually came right after the Penguins had a long shift um, in you know the offensive zone where, where I was uh, sit, sat near. Um, where they were, it was the Crosby against over Kell line that was just taking them to, to shreds. And the Stars countered that. They could have had a goal or two in that situation. And the Penguins come right back with the Malkin line. They would have finished them off. But you know, again, I thought that goal capped off a really good performance from Pittsburgh. They didn't give the Stars anything. I think that those final 59 minutes outside of that fluky goal from Lupe Hintz, that Robertson Hintz Pavelski line did absolutely nothing at 5v5. They held Jason Robertson. Um, in check, you know, and that's three straight games now where two, you know, elite players in this league right now, Tage Thompson, who has killed the Penguins over the years and who's on a, who's set the league on fire this year. Didn't score any of those good two, uh, both any of those two games only had one assist Robertson tonight. You know, he wasn't really a force at all. And, you know, the Penguins, they're doing a really good job right now of shutting down the team's best opposition and making the other players beat them, which is obviously, you know, you want to do that in any hockey game. But especially when it comes to, you know, teams like the Sabres who, you know, are good offensively and have Tate Thompson. And, and even though the Stars aren't as good offensively, they're a better team. But, you know, they you rely on them with defense and goaltending. They still have young, you know, really good young talent, especially in Hens, Robertson, and then the older guys of Pavelski, Ben, and Sagan, who are really good. I can add Heiskin into the younger guys because he's a treat to watch. He was flying all over, all over the ice. But um really nice shift at the end there for the penguins to steal those two points and you know that's 12 out of 12 points in, the, in their last six games and you know now now they'll get to go south uh to try to take on a panthers team that's not been that good this year and then they'll head to carolina um on sunday monday to, uh, for a, um to wrap up that two-game road trip but that wraps up this first segment for today's episode coming up in the second segment we'll get into a little bit on the power play and poj is going why that was just uh, one hell of a shot for them. I mean, that was just unbelievable. Um, but before we get to that, at Locked On Penguins, we believe home should be where you and your family feel safest, especially over the holidays. This season, give yourself and your family the gift of peace and protection with the number one rated home security system, Simply Safe. And right now, Simply Safe is offering Locked On Penguins listeners, you all, 40% off a new security system, but don't put this off. It was named the best home security of 2022 by U.S. News and World Report, a third year in a row that Simply Safe was named that. In an emergency, 24/7 professional monitoring agents use fast protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify the threat is real, so you can get higher priority police response. 
It is whole home security with advanced sensors for every room, window, and door. HD security cameras from inside and out. Smarter ways to detect motion that alert you only when a threat is real. And even hazard sensors that detect fires, floods, and other threats to your home. Do not miss your chance to save big on my favorite security system. Remember, you can get 40% off any new system at simplysafe.com slash NHL today. That is simplysafe.com slash NHL. There is no safe like Simply Safe. All right, I'm back in this episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I am your host, Hunter Hodes. Remember to follow me on Twitter at Hunter Hodes. Follow the show's Twitter at Eleanor Show Penguins. And of course, thank you all so much for making this your first um, listen of the day. Really cool stat from Penguins PR on Instagram. Uh, Mike Sullivan, this was his 700th game um, as an NHL head coach, and he is eighth all time with the most wins through his first 700 games. Um, behind Toe Blake, Tom McCollin, Mike Babcock, Glenn Sather, Scotty Bowman, Bruce Pedro, and, and John Cooper. Sullivan has 384 tied with Dave Tippett for eighth. So congratulations to Mike. You know, another distinct honor uh, as the head coach of this team. And I think he's going to be the head coach of the Penguins for years to come. So other tidbits that I really enjoyed out of this game when I was watching in person. And I swear, it's such a different experience to be at the arena um, than... <clears throat> You're saying at home. And if, if some of you all are listening to my show and you have not been to PBG yet, please make the drive up, fly in, do whatever you got to do. It's it's a really good arena. And I think you all would have a lot of fun watching that game. Um, but power play continue to stay hot tonight. That's goals now in what? Five. Six, I know it's at least five games. It actually might be six now, but it's at least five straight games now of a power play goal. That's the longest stretch that the Penguins have had since March of last season. But it, March of this year, but obviously last season and it just it looks like a good unit i saw some people kind of cra- crapping on the first unit tonight i thought they were moving the puck pretty well they just weren't burying the chances because the stars penalty kill is pretty decent league wise uh, around the league excuse me and jake ottinger is also one of the best goaltenders on hockey it's hard to get chance it's hard to get chance passed him but the second unit was able to do that really nice zone entry by po joseph the penguins are moving the puck around with authority and then poj is able to get it come down the blue line a little bit and then just roof a shot for his first goal of the season. I believe that's only his second goal of his career. Oh, um, if that if my math adds up, um, yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah, I, I he has not scored since the COVID shortened season, um, because well, you know, he has, just hasn't been up a lot. But um, what a shot that was, you know, Ottinger, no chance, really nice screen in front there. Um, I don't know, you know, didn't look like he saw some of it, but I think even if he did, I don't even think he would have saved that. That was going. Top shelf every time. Really nice shot by P.O. Joseph. And he is, I mean, I'm running out of things to say about him at this point because he's blowing my expectations away. I knew that he was a good defenseman in his own zone. I just didn't know if he was going to be this good offensively this quickly. You know, these last 10 to 11 to 12 games, he is really showing what he can do in all three zones on the ice. And right now, Thank God the Penguins didn't trade him over the offseason, you know, because I was I've been told on pretty decent authority that they were trying to move him during the preseason because they wanted to put Ty Smith up there. You know, I don't know where this team would be right now if it was Ty Smith in the lineup and POJ was playing somewhere else, but I don't know if they'd be nearly as good. I can say that, you know, he's definitely part of their short and long-term plans right now. You know, he needed to play. They needed to see how good he was. And so far, uh, he is proving, you know, a, a lot of – I don't want to say this. I think he's proving a, a fair amount of people wrong right now just because he played in Wilkes-Barre for a long time. Didn't know if he was ever going to get a call up. He's, he's just been inconsistent at times. But, you know, his first full season in the league, because he's considered a rookie, um, he's been really good. And I think if it weren't for this strong rookie class, we'd be talking about some Calder Trophy love for him. You know, it's, it's not he, – he's not going to get it. You know, it's just because that's how it works. But – He's having a really strong rookie season so far, and I'm glad that he was able to get um, a goal tonight. And again, the power play, I thought, looked really good um, overall. Switching gears a little bit, I thought Chris Letang played a pretty, uh, play, played a pretty strong game. Thought he was moving the puck uh, even better than he did against the Buffalo Sabres. He looked injured a little bit at times. I think he got uh, cross-checked from behind by uh, Yoel Kivi. Ronta should have been a penalty. I don't know what the I, – I saw a – Ref just looked right at him when I was at the arena and he just stared at him and just did not reach down and, and put his arm up. So, uh, you know, reached down and put his arm up. Um, he just looked at it, 
decided to have play play on, and that was that. Um, I, I don't understand it. I think that's just peak NHL officiating. And I, I said to my girlfriend, I'm like, that is a call that you can get mad at because she was um, talking to me about how, you know, all these like little mini hits should be penalties. I'm like, no, like this is what happens every NHL game. They never call that stuff. And then I turned to her and I said, no, that is a legit penalty. It just wasn't called because NHL officiating is just bad. But um, glad to see he was okay off that. And I thought, you know, he, he didn't really pass up too many scoring opportunities. He was really good with the puck in his own zone. Um, set up some nice chances in the power play. He's starting to shoot even more. I think all the man advantage was really good. You know, he's starting to put the pieces together slowly but surely. I know it's only a second game back after the stroke, but um, I thought this was also one of the, the finest performances of his season to date. And then Tristan Jari. Let's just wrap up with that before we go into the final segment. Another really strong game. That first goal that he allowed, just fluky. You know, not, nothing really going on there. But, you know, lately he's been – he's a man on a mission right now. You know, I believe um, if I have this stat right, I'm here if I can see this. Yeah, this comes courtesy of the Pittsburgh Penguins. Um, 9-0-2 in his last 11 games. That's the longest porn streak of his career. And his 11-game point streak is the longest such streak by a Penguins goaltender since Marc-Andre Fleury. 12 consecutive games in 2012. So Jari will put that to the test, I'm sure, on Thursday when he gets to start against the Panthers. And then if they win that game or even get a point, he'll try to get the record. Um, on Sunday when they travel down to Carolina or they travel up, I should say, from Florida to Carolina to take on the Hurricanes. So um, he's playing really, he's just playing at a really high level right now. Um, this is the level that I think we all, I mean, at least I expected him to play at for most of the season. Kind of had a little bit of a rut. I do think a, a good chunk of it was injury related, in my opinion. But right now, you are really seeing him round into form, playing aggressive, making the saves that he's supposed to make bailing the team out at times when you know team needs to and you know i was realizing this as well these, these last a uh, few games um you know they're kind of i mean they're, they're kind of 50 50s in some ways just because the penguins haven't really dominated these three teams they play well enough to win it's just that the other teams some of them haven't gotten the save especially when it came to buffalo their goal has been bad all year by the penguins they were able to get their sa the saves from their goaltenders in those two games. And then tonight, Jari was able to outdo one of the best goaltenders in the league. The goaltending is really rounding into form, and it's why the ship has, has been righted right now. Just because, you know, when they were struggling in that seven-game losing streak, penalty kill, goaltending, they, they kind of go hand-in-hand. Hand. Now, penalty kill is a top-five unit in the league. Trish and Jari's over 930, 940 over the last month. See, you see what I'm talking about? Those two things go hand in hand. Once those turn around, the offense is going to produce. Defensively, you clean up some stuff in your, in your defensive zone. What do you have? The makings of a very, very good hockey team. I don't know how far this team is going to go. I don't know if they're going to go on a cup run. What I do know, Yins, we have a really good hockey team here. This is still an excellent team. Um, one of the best, I think, in the Eastern Conference. And <clears throat> a team that I think can make some noise, especially if they can go out and maybe get another forward for this lineup. It's, you know, we all know what's going to come down to depth, you know, can the bottom six score in the playoffs when the top six is being shut and is being shut down and the goaltending that's been the biggest question for a long time with this franchise. But, you know, I think those are the main players that really jumped out to me tonight. And I thought, you know, I already touched on Gino as well. He was galloping tonight. He was forcing turnovers left and right. You know that when he's doing that and when he's, skating with authority you can tell that a big hot streak is on the way and i think tonight was the start of that just because that was his first goal um in 10 games i think other than that when no one else really jumped out at me i think everyone else played mostly fine uh overall but um coming up in the next segment we're getting just some of your listener takeaways what you all thought of this really strong performance from the penguins but before I get to that, BetOnline is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. You can get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from pro football to college bowl season to basketball and the World Cup. We've got it all at BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can even find those at BetOnline as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. You can head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. That has been online where the game starts. 
All right, I'm back here on this episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I am your host, Hunter Hodes. Remember to follow me on Twitter, at Hunter Hodes. Follow this show's Twitter, at Larsa Penguins. And, of course, thank you all so much for making this your first listen of the day. So let's get into your listener takeaways here. Um, Irish AJ says, POJ has impressed so far, and it's been great these last couple of weeks. He should be getting the second pair of minutes over Dumo. Also got to love Gino. Yeah, I think at this point, you know, POJ should be getting more minutes. And I, and I, and I was saying this on my Twitter a couple of days ago. Are we ready to see POJ on the top pairing? Let me know what you all think of that. Do you think he should, you know, supplant Marcus Pedersen up there? Because Pedersen and Petrie played really well together. I know Petrie was out tonight with that injury. It, it's it's the hand. That's, that's what it is. I don't think it's broken. He said after the game that he was fine. You know, not fine enough to play in this game. I think he's being further evaluated. It's probably just really sore. Something like that. Maybe it's a sprain. I don't, I don't know. The Penguins are very tight-lipped when it comes to injuries. They've always been like this. But that's a very good pairing when healthy. And with POJ's, um rise right now uh i do think he should he could be getting top pairing minutes sooner rather than later and then you can have Dumoulin and ruta as your bottom pairing pretty good stuff and then and next year you want to look towards next year to potentially joseph letang patterson petrie ty smith comes up to replace brian Dumoulin with young ruta we're cooking with some fire on that defensive core uh, that that gets me really excited uh, for next year but you know Dumoulin. Um, you know, he played fine tonight, but still, it's it's still not what we're accustomed to at this point. Um, Scott McGregor says, Hey Hunter, I enjoy listening to your podcast and content. The penguins, and I have two takeaways. Um, first off, Scott, really appreciate you listening to the show. Appreciate everyone always that listens to the show here. He did say Malkin scores in the final two minutes of the game to give the penguins the lead in number two. Tristan Jari being good tonight after a little bit of a shaky start. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> excuse me, Tristan. It was a fluky goal. You know, 19 seconds in, that stuff happens, and it's the Stars' top line. They're, they're going to do that to anyone. You know, the last 59 minutes, though, I thought the Penguins were very good against that line. And, you know, the other three lines that the Stars ran out, I think Peter DeBoer was just telling them to collapse down low, not really give the Penguins a lot, and just kind of play defensively because those other three lines were not getting a lot of scoring chances. It was really just the top line that war was just sending over and like, okay, go do our offense for us. The other three lines are going to play mostly defense. We're going to play it safe and kind of just trap it down a little bit. But definitely a little bit of a shaky start, but I do agree that Tristan had a really nice, you know, final 59 minutes. And yeah, I mean, Malkin, just a really nice goal to be at in the right spot at the right time. And I do think he has a big hot streak coming here. Um, he's been a little cold lately, but, you know, that's the ebbs and flows of the season. Um, I think he's about to break out here. and then. Alan T. Yoder says, the one home game I missed so far this season, but it was a good one. Good for BOJ. Did not have him scoring a power play goal on my bingo card and also good for Gino. I've been thinking over the last few games that he looks like he's going to go off soon. That, hopefully tonight is the start. Yes, Alan. Great minds think alike. And I think this is – we're going to get it, really. I think we're going to get it right now. Uh, I think that you're about to see a big Gino takeover, to say the least. And <laughs> 8 a.m. Abram King. Gino has messed up the chemistry, and we are better off without him. I, I love getting those takes. You know, a great emoji, but yeah, I, I hope that goal also, um, <clears throat> you know, continue to laugh in the people's faces that said they were going to be a better team without him heading into the season. Those people are a bunch of sheep, uh, just a bunch of geezers, I think. But I'm glad that, you know, the people that sent in their reactions had kind of the same takes um, to this game. Just a really tight checking Low scoring game, and you know, I, I usually despise low scoring games just because they're so boring to watch. But that was fun, you know, fast teams going at each other, decent scoring chances, good goaltending, tight checking. It's, I, I like those kind of games at times, especially between two really good teams that had a playoff feel to it. Stars are going to be right there in contention to come out of the Western Conference, the Penguins potentially here in the East. Um, really fun game to go to. Um, I was joking with my girlfriend as well just to end the show here. Uh, had they lost this game, I think, you know, that no, she would not have been allowed back because she would have been 0 2 in their last two games. And uh, because I came in that last game against the Maple Leafs on a five game winning streak. So she would have directly influenced two of the losses. Um, but, you know, got off the snod tonight and the Penguins were able to get that win. Up next for them is a date with the Fancy Cats, as I like to call them. That I, back when they had the analytics team running the show before Dale Talon took the show back over. Um, they called where they were called the fancy cats. So I'll always call them that. And that should be a fun game on Thursday. I love watching Matthew Kachuk. He's just an absolute animal on uh, the Panthers. Not as good of a team this year, but still, 
um, they can be dangerous when they want to be. Uh, maybe we'll do a preview with Armando of Locked On Panthers. You can stay tuned for that. And then the Penguins after that, they will head up to Raleigh to play the Hurricanes for the second time this season before coming home to play the Rangers and the Hurricanes right after that. And then they play the Devils a lot. They're, they have a tough schedule stretch here. So that winning streak is going to be put to the test really shortly. But overall, really strong performance, six in a row, in a prime playoff spot. We'll see if they can keep it up on Thursday. For tomorrow's episode, I think I'll potentially have a preview of the game against the Panthers um, and go into some other topics as well. So again, thank you all so much for listening. I really, really appreciate it. We'll be back on Tuesday for you all. So again, thank you all so much for listening. Talk soon.